Okay, listen to this. It's been a while since Lee was announced as the first Bachelor in The Bachelor South Africa. And you know that Sia and Leanne were completely into that show and they watched every episode. I saw one or two and I tried to participate, but I'm not very good at watching TV. And I do know Lee. I, I, I met Lee a couple of years ago because he's a Pretoria boy like me. And now that the dust has settled, he can finally speak about the show and his experience on the show. He's also written a book. He's a businessman. We'll talk about his business a little bit too. And recently, he got a new girlfriend and a puppy, which he reckons is practice for parenthood. Mm. So, all right, dude, first of all, um, well done for finally getting to our show, what, like two years after you were on TV? Yeah, I thought I'd wait a bit, you know, and make the anticipation worth it. No, yeah, well, we almost, <laughs> forgot, we almost forgot about you, but thank God you uh, <laughs> managed to do it. So, all right, uh, Lee, first of all, your season of The Bachelor was the highest rated season, and it, it was really a big show in South Africa. They've tried to do more seasons since then. I don't know how they've done. Uh, how, how, how do you feel about the show with, you know, like the benefit of hindsight and some retrospect? Oh, you know, it's, it's been really good. I'm very proud to be a part of a show that's done so well. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, it was one of the highest rated shows, reality shows of all time. Um, and yeah, I feel very proud to be a part of it. But, you know, in hindsight, there's a lot of things now that the dust has settled. And, you know, that now that I've watched the show and gone through what I have, I do see things a little bit differently. And there may have been different decisions that I would have made and different choices that would have, would have happened. Did, did you go into this? Because now you can say it without having to feel silly about it. And you, you don't have so, to... You don't have to promote the show, but did you really feel going into the show you were going to find true love and that you took it seriously, like you were absolutely in it for the right reasons? Or were you cynical, like I have always been about TV, and you were like, well, I'll, I'll do this. It's a fun project, and I'll get some money, and then I can carry on with my life afterwards. No, 100%. I was fully in there, committed to try and find the partner to spend the rest of my life with. That was my main goal. No doubt what? about that. What are, you, um, what are you, retarded? I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all have different views on love. But I think, you know, just something I really wanted. And I just thought it was a great opportunity. I was so busy with work and that was difficult to, you know, relationships take time. So I thought this would kind of put everything else on hold. And I could fully focus on this relationship and finding a partner thing. And mm -hmm. I thought that Emnet would come up and, and Rapid Glue and the production companies would come up with, with really good options for me. Are you saying are you saying those girls were of low quality? A lot of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them. <laughs> now, now okay. we're really. Now Lee, if, yeah. if you're going there, there if I'm you're going there, then let's go there. There were twenty five girls, twenty four girls. Out of the twenty four, who do you think were like, yeah, worthy? Um, I'm not. I think. I can't really comment on that. I don't want to make anyone right. upset. But the list, yeah, I mean, it was definitely my main focus to find love and find someone to be with for the rest of my life. And obviously, it had benefits in terms of exposure and business sure. um, ventures, etc., which have worked in my favor. But um, it did take a toll on me mentally and emotionally after the show. So that kind of contradicted what I wanted from that as well. So I struggled a bit after the show and probably up until only recently, I'm starting to get over a few things. Yeah, I think that a lot of people underestimate how a sudden flood of attention, like you're the kind that a show like that could give you. And if you went in with genuine, you know, desire to, to find uh, someone to spend the rest of your life with, as you put it, then you're bound to be disappointed because TV is mostly... Um, nonsense. It's mostly made up. And they, they script things and so much of it is contrived and so much of it is them filming you when you don't know they're filming you and, and then putting words in your mouth or making the girls do things that maybe they wouldn't do in real life just so they oh. can make great TV because it's about advertising. I mean, uh, let's, let's be under no illusions here. Television is an advertising business. And, and it's all about ratings it, and viewership. Correct. Um, so what were the things that they made you do or say that you would go back and say no to now? Well, there were certain situations where I was uh, manipulated, persuaded into selecting certain women and keeping them in the show, 
where I would have wanted that person out, for example. And mm -hmm. that could change things, you know. Um, I think I should have spoken up a bit more and stood my ground a bit more. But mm -hmm. when you're in that bubble, you know, I call it the bachelor bubble, you're so easily influenced and manipulated. It's, it's hard. It's hard not to go with what's what they're doing and what they trying to make you do. Um, so it was tricky at times, but you know, I just stayed true to what I wanted, and it was my first real TV experience. I mean, I'm not an actor. I mean, I've done modeling, so that's probably the closest thing I've got to, you know, to to being out there in terms of publicity and, and magazine work and that type of thing. But this is a whole different ball game. And I was so oblivious to the whole situation. I never really knew what to expect. I went in there with the best intentions. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you go through a whole bunch of psychometric tests and all that. I mean, I think you know a lot about reality shows, Gareth. And I think through that, they could see how they could play you and what they can and can't use against you and how they can persuade you in certain ways and play to their advantage, which I think they did most of the time. Um, mm. and, and I think playing out stories that they know the viewers would want to hear and see. Yeah. Um, like, for example, there were, you know, every episode there seemed to be something mentioned about my family. And yeah. they assured me that that would be not, not be edited in the show. You know, so every time I went on a one-on-one -on -one date, which I never really had the choice of choosing who I'd gone the dates with, by the way. Yeah. Um, they would always ask me these questions about my family and that. So I thought, okay, you're getting to know someone, you're wanting to have a relationship, so you need to, you need to share these things with the person. And but I, but the director did assure me that. Sorry, my puppy's being a bit naughty. Here. My director, show, show, us, show us the puppy. We suddenly we've lost interest in you. Yeah. <laughs> my director, oh man, director, what, is, what, is that? what kind of dog is that? It's a chow chow. Oh man, Aww. that's a cute dog. What's its name? Skyler. <laughs> my name from the show. Skyler. Hello. Yeah. Such a so, little teddy bear. Yeah. He's, right, so, he's, what, he's, what did the what did the director do with this um, footage about your family that they were? So, for example, I, he I, he guaranteed me that none of it would be aired or edited in the show. So I then kept on revealing these these um, you know these stories that the woman would ask me, which I found out later they were probed to do by production, and oh. then every episode there it was. You know, and it affected my relationship with my mother. I don't have a relationship with my father. I don't, you know, don't yeah. really know him and all these things. So it just, you know, it kind of just was a big disaster at the end. Have, have you and your mom just, patched things up since then? Because it must have been painful for her to have heard you talking about, like, how you had difficulty in your family. I mean, who who wouldn't do that on a date? You know, you'd be, you try to be honest with people because you're trying to connect with them. Precisely. So initially she was hurt and sad, but I think she understood and she saw what they were doing. So she looked past that and she she has moved on from that and she understands. Wow, okay. And and you didn't say anything on there that wasn't true, but some of it must have been hurtful. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I just try to be like from the beginning I said I'm gonna be honest and open as possible. Um, because that's the only way you can get really have a relationship to work. And that's just me. I just I promised myself from the beginning of the show, I'm going to go on there, be me. People can yeah. like it or leave it. And, um, but they did make certain promises and commitments to me, which they did not follow through with. And um, it, you know, it's you, of mental health issues after the show. You, you, you had to deal with some mental health issues? Yeah. Okay. That's nice and honest of you. So did you actually fall in love with any of these girls? Towards the end, yeah, I fell in love with the last two. And I know it's a short space of time to fall in love with someone, but you must remember they create these scenarios where um, where every date and every setting is perfect and it's just yeah, yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's an accelerated the whole love process. Absolutely. They they are manipulating you into love because that'll make great TV and, and psychologists are involved in putting these things together and 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 people who are experts in like creating the perfect scenario and circumstance for people to fall in love, because this is what happens. We can be manipulated. In fact, if you put two people on an island and they're deeply, deeply unattractive to each other at the beginning, within a couple of weeks of spending time with each other, they will start to develop feelings. That's what human mm -hmm. humans do. We're social animals. It's human nature, yeah. And you find reasons to want to believe in something or to make something work or to connect. And I mean, you're Did, given those 24 to work with, and that's what you got, you know. So 
So yeah, like, even slowly. though you even though you did say they were quite low quality. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I just nodded. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right. No, so not, not all of them. It's just um, I think just w- after watching the show, when I say low quality, I mean in terms of things that I found out about a lot of them because before the show I knew absolutely nothing, and then rumors and and false rumors that were spread made me believe that these people are some of them are actually low quality in terms of their mannerisms and personality so that you discovered after the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but you, you discovered that after the show yes yes i mean in the show you don't know any of the ladies from above so um and then you watch the show afterwards you see what they say behind the scenes which you never really get to see, you never really know about until right. you watch the show and then um yeah also later on you, you find out things and you see who's been saying what people people can gossip and listen these girls are in competition for you uh, on the show which makes a whole different dynamic you know when you go out as a single guy and you try to find a girlfriend or you you, you start a relationship with somebody you they're not competing with 24 other people who know that they're competing mm. that really raises the stakes so were you were any of these girls a real like turn on? Were there any of them that you thought about when you weren't on the show, and uh, you know like, played with yourself? Uh, were, there, were, there, were there any of these? <laughs> um... Were there any of these women who oh, really? I, good, yeah. I mean, were there any of these women who really turned you on? Um, they were, they were. Because you can't have a physical relationship on the show. Like you, you guys weren't allowed to go off to the bedroom and, and have sex with each other. And for most relationships, that's part of it, right? Yeah, of, of course. You know, any relationship there's physical contact and and that involved. It's part of a relationship. But you know, which was was so frustrating and, and difficult to form these relationships and make them stronger was the only real time we got to spend with each other was when the cameras were rolling. Once that's, the cameras yeah. were done rolling, we were torn apart. And it's I mean, it's a hand, absolutely, it's a handful of hours and with some even minutes that you get to spend with them and you have to make these choices at the rose ceremonies to either select them or not select them. It's really yeah. difficult. Sometimes you are thumb sucking and other times you're being persuaded by, by our production to choose this one and not that one mm-hmm. because it plays better into the story that they have in their minds. Okay, hmm. so the show's over now. Let's. We, we, there are a couple of questions. I mean, Kerry wants to know. Uh, she's just sent a question now. How long did the relationship last after the show? That was with um, the girl. Who was the girl Gina. who won? Yeah, you remember Gina. Okay, Gina. so yeah. So how long did that last after the show? Mm, well, we saw each other for about a month or so, mm-hmm. but I mean, it had to be very secretive, you know. So. Just Why quite... you've just you, you started your relationship on screen? Why did you keep it secret? No, but yeah. it was between the f- after the filming had yet. wrapped and then the final hadn't aired. Oh right, yeah, so exactly. yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, I got you. Well, okay, that's what sense. Sarah's saying is um, so we that we wrapped up filming twenty eighteen December, mm-hmm. and then uh, there was a break, and then two thousand nineteen February, the show aired. So okay. I say, let's say up until that time, it was really tricky for us to see each other, even up until towards the end of the show, because, you know, you don't want to give anything away. Um, mm-hmm. So it was a lot of secret visits and all that. And, you know, things were right in the beginning, but then they got off to, to rocky starts, you know. Um, then the rumors started happening, and then Mnet would tell us not to see each other. And then wow. the pressure of the entire show just started coming you know, together and fall down on the relationship. And um, I must say, I was also really confused at, at one stage um, because Yuzan, who came second, I was really, you know, it was really close between the two. You can say 49% to 51%. Um, and I wow. literally woke up that day still but indecisive. And, um, but yeah, it was really tricky. So what happened after the show was she actually wanted some closure. So she asked Yuzan, the, the second finalist, um, she asked me to um, to come and see you and just explain why. Oh, so wow. I thought this was a bit of a, well, now I realize later it was a bit of a setup actually. And I told Gina, like, listen, this is what she's asked me to do. And I'm going to go and see her. Is she right with that? And, you know, just for some closure, out of respect, I even went to go mm-hmm. see her father and that type of thing, which was, which was really tough. Um, but I thought it was the right thing to do. Um, and yeah, it just actually made it worse because then you know, Bree sparks things and caused a bit of confusion. 
Um, but yeah, it was difficult because Gina wasn't really, and she stopped speaking to me. So it was oh, just a boy. Big, yeah, it was just a really big uh, stuff up in the end and huh. um, a lot of confusion. Um, especially within it, like we're trying to handle the, the relationship, like control yeah. telling. Yeah, you got like you you know, know, you PR people it. getting involved and all that kind of thing, right? Absolutely, it's the PR they involve because they want things to to play out the way they want it to. So. Ruth wants me to ask you, um, what was the biggest lesson that you learned from the experience? The biggest lesson. Don't date 24 women at once, ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would make sense. So polygamy is not in your future? No, no. I've done lots of research on YouTube. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't work. That's, Sir, Sergio uh, says, I used to see Lee in Melrose Arch quite a lot after the show. Was that where you used to meet with uh, Gina? Your secret location? <laughs> well, it's pretty much doesn't sound much of a secret, but no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, for All example, right. like... Um, I was standing at the Michelangelo throughout the filming of the show. And mm -hmm. then the mansion was just down the road in Sandhurst. So okay. we would see each other after the show at the hotel because I stayed there for an extended period after the show as well. And then I moved into uh, to an apartment and then we would see each other briefly. Um, until All right. Well, there, there are probably lots of other things that, um, that people will want to know about the show. But you're gonna, you, you've actually written a book. Yeah, halfway. Okay, you, you're busy with it. And you have subsequently you got this puppy, which is good because, you know, you, you need to be a responsible human. And this is a great way to learn those kinds of things. And you've got a new girlfriend and you've been very careful to protect her identity. In other words, this is not a public relationship like the one that you had on TV. Yeah. And you're, you're trying to be respectful and maintain a bit of privacy, right? Yes, definitely. I mean, it's, it's quite a contradiction to situation i was in with the bachelor um she's personally asked to to remain anonymous and mm -hmm. um, i respect that and i think that says a lot about her as a person and i can understand why i mean you've seen how cool the media can be and i don't was want she, that role for her was she nervous to even try and date you because people would involve themselves and and you've still got loads of fans from the show i mean they're girls who obviously will will see you in the shops and and wherever you're you're, you're doing your thing and They'll run up and scream and need a picture and all that kind of thing. So you've probably got used to that, but it can be very off-putting to someone you're dating. Hundred percent. But you know, this is why in the beginning, before we started dating, actually, I sat her down and we had a chat about all these things because I just wanted her to know what she's getting herself into and what to expect. And she's very mature. She is older. She's turning thirty-seven this month now. Um, I'm thirty-one, so she handles things differently to what a say twenty-three-year-old or twenty-four-year-old would. And mm. she understands that. And then at the end of the day, I just try to remind her that, you know, remember, I'm young with you. And that's all that matters. And, you know, no one else matters except you. <laughs> Sounds like a rose ceremony all over again. Steele <laughs> was such a, he pretends now, but he was such a fan. Like, he just loved that show. He would no, 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 no. I, oh, I am into it. I still remember that off-the-shoulder champagne dress that Gina wore at the finale and your blue suit <laughs> and the tense emotion. Ow. Oh, please, I'm in it. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, um, so I didn't even know that you were going to be on the show. And, you know, they were auditioning people for The Bachelor, but I'd, I'd known Lee before because we're both from Pretoria and we had mutual friends. I think and we then, made it the fashion show the one day, actually. I, I, if you, if I was ever at a fashion show, then you remember more than me because I've been known to fall asleep during those. Either way, it, it was, it was quite funny because I saw you on TV and I, I, you know, I saw them building you up and kind of telling the story and all the rest of it. And I, I, I'm very suspicious of TV because I've, I've seen it from the inside. And, you know, they always say, if you, if you, a, a, a really, big fan of food should never go into the kitchen to see how the sausages are made. And the same goes for television. When you're watching it as a, as a viewer, there's a lot that happens behind the scenes that you shouldn't really know because it spoils the fantasy. And for many people watching a show like the bachelor is a fantasy. It's yeah. um, for a lot of the girls. It's this fantasy of meeting this great guy and being in these romantic situations and competing and, and eventually getting your man and, you know, true love and all of that stuff. And and for a lot of the guys, I mean, I was talking earlier about two of my friends uh, who I've, I've been trying to hook up with 
you know, almost any girl I know for the last couple of months and it's just not working. So for a lot of guys, it must be so exciting to be pursued by 24 women and you get to choose and they're all beautiful, and blah, blah, blah. But it's really, it's, it's kind of bizarre. It's just such an unnatural situation. It's, it's extremely unnatural. You know, I went in there thinking I might, oh, well, I'll probably only fall in love with one person. Um, but actually I fell in love with two and I thought the rose ceremonies and letting the ladies go would be easier than what it was. But that was the toughest parts for me, like the rose ceremonies, having to say goodbye to someone and then find a reason why, you know, after such a short, a brief amount of time that you spent with them, you have to come up with an answer. I mean, it's just so tricky. Um, I mean, what do you say? And you do feel for them. Um, you mentioned the you had um, some mental health issues after the show. And I think that's really brave of you to bring up because many people think, oh, well, you know, once you're famous, you, life is going to be a breeze. And yeah. fame, fame doesn't always bring the things that people who've never had it think it brings. So what kind of issues did you have to unpack? I don't want to get too personal here and I'm, I'm not getting between you and your therapist, but like what, what kind of stuff, what kind of stuff was bothering you at that point? Um, well, um, in my book, I'll go into the truth behind the rose. I'll go into a lot more detail about the issues that I faced and um, the manipulation, the lies and the deceit, the deceit that went on um, within the show as well as, as well as my childhood and, and, the situations that brought and led up to the show, which caused these um, these mental health issues after the show. So basically, it was you know just really tough for me because firstly I'm an introvert, so having to adjust and adapt to the public eye and now be this person that's recognised where, wherever I go, it's, it's tricky. Yeah. Although COVID has helped a bit with the masks and that, you know, but I've adapted <laughs> and, and the modern. <laughs> And the modeling has helped as well to prepare me for it, you know, just working in front of the camera and people. Um, so, yeah, but I've enjoyed it. But I think just having to adapt, you know, it wasn't a natural thing for me. So that caused me a few issues. And I think all the brainwashing and manipulation from the show, that definitely took its toll on me. And um, a lot of it is to do with the show. And I've mm -hmm. struggled a lot. And it's taken about two years to come right. Um, I mean, my businesses initially took a toll. You know, I wasn't able, wasn't able to efficiently and effectively. Well, what, uh, tell us what those businesses are. So I have a cleaning business called Clean Smart, uh, commercial cleaning and COVID-19 disinfecting. Mm -hmm. And then I have um, obviously the modeling. So I struggled with um, staying in shape. You know, you just didn't have the motivation to get out of bed in the morning um, and get to the gym, for example. And then also I have fitness retreats, which we have our first one coming up now in December, the 5th and 6th. Um, but I'm back on board now and I'm back in action. But yeah, um, and, I, did, and you I, did have see, I did have to yeah. go see psychologists and psychiatrists. And um, oh, after some okay. time now, I've, I've started to get right. And, but it's um, good that you it's back. good that you took that seriously. I mean, we talk on this show a lot of the time about how people don't take mental health seriously, and and you know, especially men, we we tend to think that it's a sign of weakness um, to to seek help on these matters and. Yeah. It really is essential that people look after their mental health like they do their physical health. I mean, you 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 looked at yourself in the mirror and you decided you you needed to do some exercise, and um and you would do the same with your brain if you thought that there was something or or your heart there was something that was bothering you that you needed to sort out, right? Of course. I mean, if your mental health isn't where it should be, then how can your physical outer health be where it should be? I mean, it all starts in your head. And mental health is just as important as, as your physical health. It all falls under the same umbrella. And, you know, it was, it has been tough for me to speak about it openly like I am now, but I feel like it's, it's a brave thing to do. And I want people to know that it's okay and how you can overcome it. In my, in my book, I will be speaking about how I've overcome it and what yeah. you can do to overcome it. And, and you can be strong. And actually, you know, when you fall down, you get back up. And if you can get down, get back up from, that tough situation, you become back stronger. You just need to use it in a positive way. Yeah, all right. Stop with the motivational shit. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how about this? So, not for one um, <laughs> Sergio wants to know, do you regret doing the show? Like on a balance of like, you know, 100%, do you 50% regret it and 50% appreciate it? Or have you, have you come to a realization that it did you more good than bad around? I 100% do not regret doing the show. 
because firstly my intentions were just so true and um, mm. that was the main thing and uh, secondly although I took quite a big dip for two years it's now made me stronger than ever and there's nothing that can stop me so um, that healing that's occurred has just made me stronger and a better person and I don't think I would have been there without the show so um, even though it's caused hardship it's it's I've learned from it and grown from it so I don't have any doubts or any regrets excuse me are there any of those girls you still talk to? There are a couple. Um, yeah, I have a few friendships with some of the ladies, and we have we okay. throw the odd. DM. Any of them ever? Any of them ever sent you a nude? No comments. Oh, okay. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. That's, that, that, that is the comments, I guess. Now I'm joking. Now. Saucy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very nice. Well, listen, dude. I'm so happy for you that you found a, a, a girl who's you know looking for the right things, and and you're in this for the right reasons. Um, that, that it seems that business is back up and running because everybody, I think, took a huge knock with COVID. And yeah. I think a lot of people were very down. Um, but most importantly, I'm glad that you got your head and, and heart sorted out because everybody thinks that, um, you know, when you look the way you do, that you, you're some kind of superhuman. And we all have weaknesses and foibles and we all have things that we could learn. And Many of us don't take our mental health seriously enough. And I'm, I think it's a great example. And it's brave of you to talk about it, especially because there are people who will try to write it out and they will try to say, oh, you know, well, I'm, I'm better than the average person because I can handle these things. It's, mm. it's just not true. Everybody has weaknesses that they need to confront. And only by confronting and overcoming those weaknesses can you get better. But well done to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Gareth. And yeah, hopefully this can just set an example for everyone. And, you know, no one's perfect. Um, and people, as you say, they look at you and they think, okay, this, they judge you and this, they, have this, they have this stereotype on you and that you are untouchable. Yeah. And what is can go wrong, but you are human at the end of the day. No matter how you look or what you do, you are human. Yeah. And issues yeah. occur, you just need to handle them the right way. And what, is the thing, what is the thing that irritates you the most that people ask you or or talk about with, with regard to you? What is the thing that drives you crazy that still gets you irritated? Questions about the show? No, anything about your life, you, the show, um, your business, whatever it might be. Is mm. there certain things that just annoy you? Yeah, something that hits the nerve. Yeah. Um, when people ask me about my family. Really? Yeah, that hits the nerve. It gets frustrating because this thing is like people ask those questions because they actually selfish and wanting to know those answers for themselves, not really thinking about what's in your best interest and whether you or what it's going to do to you or how it's going to affect you, you know, in terms of your emotional state. So it's, it's a bit, I find that to be a bit selfish sometimes, um, depending on where it's coming from and who it's coming from. But if yeah. it's just a random stranger, then, then it does, it does annoy me, especially so, on social media. Yeah. Social media is just a swamp. Stay away from there as much as you can. Elaine says, my daughter was in the run for the show and I threatened to disown her if she went on the show. Of course, there would be psychological damage. Your life will be changed forever. So Elaine, a good mother, keeping her, her daughter off that show. Good mother. Very good mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Leanne and Sia, I know you've got uh, some questions. We've got like two minutes and we've got to get to George. What do you want to know? Hi, Leanne. Hi, Lee. So the... The thing for me is, and it's, it sounds like a silly question, but every single Bachelor show that I watch or Bachelorette show. She watches um, all of them. Yes. All, all of the international ones, yeah. Um, <laughs> is how do you remember all of their names at that first <laughs> year? <laughs> That's a bloody good question. That's a bloody good question. I mean, you've just met them at a cocktail party. I've got to know yeah. all of their names well listen i'm gonna i'm gonna spill the beans here firstly for me to remember one or two names um gn is, is a is a g g and yeah you know it's, it's already a, a good start um but you know i'll be honest with you i had a earpiece i had a earpiece for the first yeah. couple but then i started remembering their names I although the one the one episode the one rose ceremony i did call out the same lady's name twice but <gasps> you know, <laughs> Please stop talking to Svetlana and please pay some attention to Refue. Yes, and uh, be a bit more sad with this. Be a bit more sad, a little bit teary. Wait, hang on. You're, you're breaking. 
<laughs> wow. Oh, really? They would tell you, they would say, look a bit more sad. Jesus, that's unbelievable. Jeez. Okay. And then you'd have to pull a sad face. Well, most of the time it was true. All right, but see, I mean, you, you yeah. got well, because they knew that's when they needed to add in some piano music in the background. Lee, this is just a almost a production question. How long was the, sh the shooting overall? The filming process um, was about just over two months, so not for not very long yeah, at I mean, all. You don't get to know someone in two months, but okay, yeah. Especially considering yeah. that you're only really seeing them and speaking to them once you on camera, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I still yeah don't want to know too much more. I want to know the fantasy. You know, yeah, yeah that's the thing. You, you, know. Alive. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're you're actually a really sensitive soul, and I think that it this is a it's good that you're writing this book because there are people who should not be on TV, and I'm I'm not saying that you were bad. You you were obviously very good at it, and the show did very well. But if anyone had asked me, I would have said that certain people are not meant to be on TV. TV can feed, uh, it can it can do bad things to, to some people, as we've discussed. And I think if you are at all um, idealistic about things, TV can shatter a lot of dreams and it can make people worse, not better. And yeah. I think you've, got, you've gone through that process. Maybe it was something you had to do and, and you know, a little bit of adversity just makes people stronger. We've discussed yeah. that already. But it, it, it strikes me as interesting that one of the things that someone like me who's very cynical about TV would say is, oh, please, obviously Lee knew what he was getting into. Uh, he knew he was just acting in what was a made-up reality TV show, and it's all bullshit. But the reality is you actually went in with all the right intentions, and you were totally – you were a true believer. 100%. 100%. But as you said, Gareth, you know, it's not made for everyone. And yeah. my book, The Truth Behind the Rose, I wanted to help people and it can potentially save Sorry, lives. Sorry, mention the name of your book again, The, the tr mm -hmm. Truth Behind the Rose. The Truth Behind the Rose. Just plug that again. Which well, what, I, I, just, I was writing it down. And got uh, the... the Truth Behind <laughs> the Rose. <laughs> All right. Very good. Listen, dude. Yeah. Have, a, have a happy day. Um, Thank and, you so and, much, uh, man. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for for talking to us. I know it's taken like two years, um, and maybe in future, if you're any in any other projects, it won't take you so long to come and talk to us. We're by far the most interesting show. I mean, there's no way you would have had this conversation with any other morons in media. So well done, and really cool. Yeah, and good luck with all the future endeavors, and 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 tell that new girlfriend that we say hi. I will do. Thank you so much for having me. Gareth, okay. Sia, and Leanne. <laughs> there we uh, go. Uh, <laughs> as good as you. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it helps Thanks that so I much, guys, appreciate you on the show. And yeah, keep right, up. Okay. You, you, you be good. All right. Nice to see you. There Cheers, we go. Guys. That's Lee Thompson.